Good evening, everyone. Girlfriend is sleeping, son is sleeping. What better time than now to be doing this test tonight? I'll be testing two different stepper motors. Um, the E3D 48 millimeter 0.9 degree high torque motor versus the LDO 60 millimeter 0.9 degree. I have done many tests with uh, NEMA 17 and 1.8 degree motors of different kinds and different specs. And none of them were great for speed. Now, I'm not saying 1.8 degree motors can't speed. It's just not the case with the ones I've tested. They were not speedy at all. And they were probably high inductance. Unfortunately, most of them are not identified. So I don't know what models and spec they are. But the speeds were uh, all between 250, 350 millimeters per second. And really bad acceleration. I couldn't go... Uh, above like 20k for the most of them and that is when my good friend Mirage C at Hevort kindly offered me and sent me two A3D high torque motors 0.9 degree and boy they were flying and I take this opportunity to thank him again for that donation I really appreciate it so I also bought a set of LDO 0.9 degree motors with about the same inductance as the E3D which is around 2.8 mh but with much higher torque rating. And I will put them to the test against the E3D motor. So I'm showing the uh, different specs of the motors right here. I perform my test in two different modes, in style chop and spread cycle, since I'm using TMC drivers. I tested 45 degree movements to test with a single motor, and also X and Y movements to test with two motors. My test is very simple, using manual G-code commands for movements, and then slowly cranking the speed until failure. For the speed test, I was using 5K acceleration for all diagonal movements and 8K acceleration for X and Y movements, simply because travel length is shorter in X and Y compared to the diagonal one. Thanks, Pythagoras. So the E3D wins the first round with speed test, even though it's smaller in size and with less torque. Round two. The second round of test is acceleration. In order to reach the failure point, I'm doing my test at 400 millimeters per second. Simply because at 300 millimeters and lower, both of these motors were able to reach super high acceleration and I was simply not able to fail them. I'm doing a dry run, G-code that has really short movements, so that way I can test really fast acceleration and deceleration. Clipper has a nice feature of being able to adjust acceleration during a print, but only up to the maximum set in the firmware config file. I have put the limit at 100k. By default, Clipper will set the deceleration to have the value of the acceleration. So I'm starting the test run at 20k acceleration and 10k deceleration. Okay, so we're just gonna slowly crank that acceleration speed up. It's gonna go faster and faster. We're now at 28,000. I know for sure that I can reach um, 40K. So we're just gonna bump all the way up to 40 and 20 for deceleration. Okay, so that's 40K, which is starting to sound like a sewing machine again <laughs> and I know the limit is really not not far so cranking a bit and I'm keeping my finger on the emergency stop so we're at a 41k and uh, still doing good nope okay so you heard that we're just gonna stop that so I've done the same kind of run with the LDO motor and a quick note about current um, both motors were running at 80%, about 80% of their rated current. And the test was performed in spread cycle, just because stealth up, well, it's not even worth testing here. So we clearly have a winner here. The E3D outperforms the LDO in terms of speed and acceleration. As for printing quality, I have not done a lot of testing with the LDO, but my guess is that they will be very similar, as my testing with resonance shows very similar vibrations. So now, what is the next step up? Something really interesting is coming, so please hit the subscribe button to follow my channel and get more craziness overkill stuff. On this, I wish you all a good night, and again, thanks for watching.